Hi everybody, welcome to the eighth and what I think is going to be the final installment in this ongoing video series regarding motorcycle helmet safety standards. Uh, throughout this series I've made a point that everything I'm talking about is based on my own experience within the motorcycle helmet industry um, and I, I stepped outside of my role at LS2 because I, I want to be able to speak freely with my own opinions, not that, not that they're necessarily going to agree or disagree, but I wanted it to be direct from me to you. Uh, and I've been trying to keep all of my comments and information within the boundaries of the current standards. I've said all along I think they're all good, and I do. Uh, as I've also mentioned, I think that the blending of a DOT and an ECE, or the blending of a DOT and a Snell, probably even better. Uh, but for assorted reasons, I like all of the standards, and it's not just a generic trying to make people happy. I sincerely do. You can, you can look at the uh, ways that they manage energy and you can build a case for pretty much all of them. So great. Now here we are and where do we go from here? You know, uh, what's next? What's beyond the standards? We always have to be looking into the future and, and figuring out better ways of achieving the goal of protecting the human head and human brain. One of the hot topics in the market right now, of course, is rotational energy. And I'm on board. I think that it, it definitely is something that we need to do a better job of managing. Um, it's a relatively new science within the helmet industry. Amazingly enough, uh, we've, you know, for years and years, decades, have, have always just, you know, tested those straight down drops. And now we have to think about, you know, what direction a rider might be in when they come off the bike and hit the ground. Uh, and there are so many variables, you know, if, if a person lands and, you know, they, it's not very often that they literally torpedo in head first. Often they're tumbling or, you know, an arm comes up and, and it, they rock and there's a drop after the fact, you know, and it's a brutal topic, but the, the end result is that we build better, safer products for you, the end user. Now, uh, where will we go? This is just my speculating, but, uh, you know, there are several companies, including ours, that have released their, their first edition of energy management, rotational energy management systems. And I, you know, I applaud all of them. I think that I'm really happy to see them and, and listen to uh, their reasoning and, and logic behind what they're doing. Um, the, where I think we're gonna end up actually might be that the outer shell becomes more important, the shape and materials that that shell's made of as we go forward. Uh, if we can find materials that slide better, that uh, more rounded shapes that, that handle that initial impact better and, and get less of this kind of emotion or that kind of emotion right, right away, you're already ahead of the game before you ever get to that internal mechanical method of dealing with rotational energy. Uh, you know, now I'm not saying that those shouldn't also be there and be improved. The areas that I have of concern are, you know, how big are they? Uh, how much EPS might they take away? Now there has to be enough EPS left to pass the current standards or you couldn't use those helmets legally here in the US, uh, it has to be DOT and, and Snell wouldn't pass it if it didn't have enough of that EPS and frankly, neither would ECE. So that's kind of a given, but uh, just the same, you know, a little more is better, a little less is, is less in my opinion. And so how much of that are we perhaps taking away by adding uh, a layer of plastic or something else within it? Uh, you know, there are companies that use multiple layers of EPS with, with uh, rotational devices in between the two. And so there are other ways of, of handling it. But uh, concern would be, you know, how big does the helmet get? How, how much heavier, if at all? Um, you know, could we manage it better with sh the outer shape and with outer materials, shell materials? And uh, we are developing them. I mentioned the KPA uh, several times throughout this, this series and it, it's a material I really believe in. I, I think that it might be the future where it blends polymers with nanotechnology fibers, one billionth of a meter. Uh, so in a sense, it's almost like having a, a liquid fiber product. Um, so maybe that's the future. At any rate, um, I hope you've enjoyed this series. I invite any feedback. Um, you know, if anything that I said about any of the standards is incorrect and you spot it, no problem. Please let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to, to uh, correct that. In fact, that's the whole point here is I'm trying to invite discussion and uh, further, further your quest for educating yourself so that you can make the decision on what, which of these standards is best for you and your needs. So I hope that I'll see you out there riding. Be safe and uh, we'll talk soon.